Today, you're gonna learn how to make pink Himalayan sea salted cream mousse. Hey guys, I'm Kristen, the bubble tea queen, and welcome to my channel. Welcome to this special series on how to make boba shop items using restaurant quality grade ingredients found in majority of bubble tea shops. Salted cream mousse, also known as pink Himalayan salted cream mousse or salty mousse, is an amazing delicacy that is so great when made fresh. It's really easy to get a hold of different powders that can give you a very similar flavor and consistency, however there's something very special about making it fresh. The fresh version is the only one that I have in my shops. This is a secret recipe that I've used in all of my award-winning bubble tea shops over the years, and now I'm bringing it to you, my subscribers. Back in 2016, I created a range of drinks called the Cheesecake Collection, and let's just say they were a huge hit. So big that, well, some large name companies tried to copy them. Through feedback of customers who tried those big name copycat cheesecake drinks, and well, from my own opinion as well, they definitely missed the mark. Theirs was made from a powder, it was very kind of cheddar cheesy. They missed the point of a cheesecake drink. My recipe is smooth, really nice and creamy, sweet and salty at the same time. This mousse is something that you can kind of drink a little bit of it on its own, but it's best when you mix it in with the entire beverage. Which is why in my shops, I not only offer it as a standalone add-on item, but also for the cheesecake collection and the mousse collection. There was also a series of drinks that I did, well, before their time, if you will. It used fresh fruits and marmalades, and we mixed the mousse in with it. Oof, it was really, really good, something out of this world. But everyone just wasn't ready for it. I think I was about maybe two years too early on that one because now they're really popular. Now there's other different types of mousse out there as well. Some are very, very sweet, some are kind of flavorless, but the good thing about this one and the reason why I use it for a lot of my drinks is because it's both sweet and salty, nice and creamy, and has a really good consistency and texture and flavor profile. And it's really not that difficult to make, super easy for staff, very quick if you run out. The recipe that we're making today yields a great quantity for someone who has a boba shop. However, I will also put a conversion for half of the amount down below in the description. And of course, if you're at home and you just wanna make it for one or a few drinks, then just go ahead and half that recipe again. But of course, if you're using fresh in-date ingredients, then after you make this mousse and you keep it in the fridge in an airtight container, it will last you for at least a week. So this salted cream mousse recipe is very versatile. It's up to the customer if they wanna just go ahead and drink it the way it is, if they wanna have it this way, if they wanna put the straw through and just drink from the bottom up. I personally like to shake it into my beverages. I feel like it gives them that extra creaminess and that sweet and salty yin and yang sort of flavor. It goes great with milk drinks, milk tea drinks, fruit tea drinks, and even coffee drinks. I have probably found 101 ways to use this mousse in my beverages. So now it's up to you to figure out your favorite way. A few of my favorites is a dark smoky oolong ice cold tea with some fructose in it and 100 ml of the salted cream mousse on top. Another is a simple chocolate milk with 100 ml of the mousse on top. And again, I like to shake it in. And it's also one of the easiest ways to replicate a mint choc chip American style ice cream. Got some creamer, some fructose, some mint syrup, and some salted cream mousse. With a little bit of chocolate chips in there. Mix it all up. Mmm. Takes me back to the days. I can tell you that once you've tried this pink Himalayan sea salted cream mousse recipe, there's no going back. Now some people might say, does it have to be pink Himalayan sea salt? And the answer is yes. I've tried it with regular table salt, I've tried it with kosher salt, I've tried it with many different types of salt, and I can tell you there's something very, very special about pink Himalayan sea salt. Now the brand doesn't matter, but you definitely wanna make sure that you're getting one that is from the Himalayan mountains. Because these mountains are very special. They were apparently formed over 250 million years ago from ancient, unpolluted seas. And if it's a good company that you're buying from, it's been unrefined, and hand harvested. So this recipe isn't just any salted cream mousse recipe. It's pink Himalayan sea salt mousse recipe that I use in my award-winning bubble tea shops. Here we go. First, we're going to put two and a fourth teaspoon into our bowl. So one way to measure this in is with a teaspoon. So you would simply do two heaping teaspoons to get two and one fourth. 
Your other option, of course, is to use a teaspoon and then have a fourth teaspoon off to the side, uh, but you know, that one might get lost and whatnot. So just safe to have a single teaspoon and then just do heaping size. Next, we're going to pour in our 30 milliliters of hot water. Then is our condensed milk. At this point, what we wanna do when we put our condensed milk into the bowl is give it a really good whisk with the pink Himalayan sea salt and also the hot water. That will give the salt a chance to dissolve and give the chance for the condensed milk to get a little bit of buoyancy. This is a 397 gram can and approximately 400 grams. If you have a difficult time with can openers like I do, best to get a restaurant industrial grade type like this one, does the job every time. Okay, so now we're going to pour our condensed milk into the bowl. And then you just wanna use a spatula to make sure that you get out every last bit of that condensed milk. Because you know me and condensed milk, tasty. And then I'm gonna put my spatula into the empty condensed milk. Just keep it off to the side because we'll be using that in just another minute. All right, now we just wanna give it a quick whisk and make sure everything is really combined. And like I said, give that opportunity for the condensed milk to get a little bit of thickness and buoyancy. Next, we're gonna be putting in 600 grams of cream cheese or soft cheese. Out here in the UK, we do have cream cheese by Philadelphia, which is quite popular, of course. Um, but then they have off brands or no name brands called uh, soft cheese. And the thing is, there's absolutely no difference in the taste. They taste exactly the same. The thickness of it is a little thicker for the name brand, but we don't really need to worry about that with this recipe. But yeah, just any soft cheese or cream cheese, we want 600 grams. And if there's a little bit of the liquid on top, that's totally fine. It will get blended up nicely and you won't even realize that it's there. All right, so this is our opportunity to make sure that the soft cheese is blended really, really well. You wanna do this step of blending it really well before we add the whipping cream, okay? Because if we blend too much with the whipping cream, it will become kind of like whipped cream. Um, once we put the whipping cream in, it's more of a let's whip it to make sure it's mixed type whip. Whereas right now, we really wanna whip this. So, let's go. And then halfway in between, we're just gonna scrape down the sides of the bowl and make sure that all of the cream cheese is combined. Next, we're going to be adding this. Now, I call it Polish powder. I discovered it because there was a Polish market around the corner and we were trying to get the buoyancy of the mousse to go on the top of the drink as opposed to kind of doing that finger thing where it flows down into the drink. And this is what they use in Poland uh, to keep the cream after whipping it to kind of continue it to have that really great amazing shape and shine. It's basically glucose and modified starch. And you can find other variants of it, I'm sure, of course, in other brands, but what I usually do is I have them order it, they give me a really, really good bulk deal, and I just buy it in bulk. But I'm sure you can find something similar online or in a store local near you. This next step, we're gonna go ahead and pour the whole container, which is about nine grams of the Polish powder, into the bowl and give it a good whisk. Yeah. 
And last but not least, we need to add our 500 milliliters of whipping cream. Now normally, in the restaurant industry, you can get these really big, giant containers of whipping cream. They usually come in about one liter, and you just use half, and then you save the rest for later. However, I know many people will be making this at home, so I wanted to put it into context. Whipping cream usually is called fresh whipping cream or whipping cream in stores. It comes in smaller containers. These happen to be 300 grams each. So what I'm going to do is open both of them up and just measure to reach 500 milliliters. And whipping cream is best for this recipe. However, if you are in the UK and you can't get a hold of whipping cream, they have something called double cream out here, which is very similar to whipping cream. It's a little bit thicker, but it will give you that same flavor and the consistency and the buoyancy that we're looking for for this mousse. And just to clarify, we're not talking about whipped cream. We're not talking about this type that you can put on top of pies or cakes, nor are we talking about cool whip. Whipping cream is the type that is pouring, so you would actually pour it with cake or onto ice cream, or you would actually use this to give a really nice fresh whip on top of a pie or something. It's basically this, but minus the nitrogen in order to create that whipping sort of thing going on there. And there you go. If you have any leftover, you can add it to a drink. I actually have a drink recipe that uses some fresh whipping cream in it. Or you can add it to a shot of espresso, which would also taste really nice. And like I mentioned before, when we put this into the bowl and we whip it, it's more of a combining process. We don't actually want to whip the whipping cream. We just want to combine it enough that we know that what's in the bowl is now combined with the whipping cream. And again, we've got that Polish powder in there as well. So let's just make sure it's mixed in really well. So that last whisk you want to do on low for about 15 to 20 seconds is all. Okay, I'm just going to pop off my whisk bits here. And all of the items that we used for this, because they have dairy and you know it has that kind of greasy consistency, uh, we always want to make sure that we wash them with hot or warm soapy water. Make sure everything gets a really, really good clean. And that will also prevent any of the buildup on your items, which will continue the longevity of all of your stuff. And now we're going to pour it into the container that we will save it in the fridge. So a lot of people ask how long this will last. Well, it will last about a week in the fridge. No problem, as long as it's covered and in an airtight container. And now, of course, if your ingredients are, let's say, expiring tomorrow or something, well, then it's obviously not going to last that long. So you want to make sure that you use fresh ingredients. this sits in the fridge for a while, sometimes it will separate a little bit or the top might get a little hard, um, but very simply just take a little whisk and give it a nice little bit of a stir before you're going to put it in your beverage and you're all set to go. And like I mentioned, the magic number for putting it into a drink, which is about 350 milliliters, is 100 milliliters. So let's have your beverage go up to about 250 and then go ahead and add 100 ml on top. And then if it is a drink that you decide that you want the customer to shake it in, like a cheesecake drink or something, go ahead and shake it in for them. However, if you're adding it on as a topping or if it's the mousse on top of an ice cold beverage and that's the way that it's supposed to look, then go ahead and just give it to them the way it is. And then that way it's up to them if they wanna shake it in. All right guys, moment of truth. I put together a little sampler of my mousse here and I'm gonna give it a little bit of a try. Mm. Oh, that's really, really good. You can have a little bit of it on the side. It's definitely got that flavor that is so nice and creamy. However, it's best enjoyed in a beverage. And like I said, if you shake it into the beverage, like a chocolate milk or a tea drink, ooh, that sweet and saltiness just cuts through the flavors and it really balances it out. It creates something that's just absolutely out of this world. I really think you're gonna like this.
Well guys, thanks so much for joining me today as I bring you this special secret recipe of the pink Himalayan sea salted cream mousse. I know we've done a lot of talking today, but now it's your time to go to your kitchen and make it happen. And when you're done, please be sure to leave a comment below and let me know how did it turn out for you. Do you prefer your mousse on top or shaken in? What's your favorite combination to add the mousse to? And while you're there, please be sure to hit that like button and subscribe. I bring you a brand new drink video every week. See you soon.